all right hello everyone so a very very happy new year to all of you i just hope a wish and pray that this uh, 2021 brings a lot of happiness and success for all of you and your families so i'm dr tushar mehta i'm an orthopedic surgeon and a national level faculty of orthopedics for uh, pg aspirants and the post graduates uh, today this video is about a very very important topic of you know uh, upper limb osteology we have heard about scapula and i'm sure in your first year anatomy when you were you know just uh, freshers in your medical college you read osteology you read about scapula and there was a small point which was written in the applied anatomy of scapula which was called as sprengel's deformity i'm sure you know you have read this topic it's a high elevated scapula that is called sprengel's deformity today we will discuss this from a larger and a broader perspective so let's begin uh, what is sprengel's deformity see first of all it's a congenital anomaly not very commonly seen in clinical practice it's a little rare one now what it is all about this is an interruption in the caudal migration of scapula so ideally at the time of birth and even before that scapula is usually a high high riding bone so it should descend down and when it does not descend down if there is no normal caudal migration if that is interrupted then this is what we call as sprengel's deformity you know what happens i will discuss that in detail but let me just tell you what happens broadly so not only scapula is high riding not only it is elevated but there is a slight amount of medial rotation of the scapula as well we will talk about all these things in a detail i'm sure with this image you can uh, very well make out this high riding scapula hair so this is an interrupted caudal migration of scapula called as sprengel's deformity uh, it is usually associated with certain clinical symptoms one of which is a limited abduction beyond 90 degree so you you can appreciate that this abduction beyond 90 degree is little difficult to achieve anyhow we will go ahead with the topic and uh, you know i have always been very fond of talking slight about the history so ulenberg was the first person to describe then willett and walsham described a couple of cases but then finally who is sprengel so it is otto gerhard karl sprengel i mean i don't want all of you to remember the names but if you can remember it that's good so otto gerhard karl sprengel was the guy who described these cases and therefore the word sprengel's deformity came into existence when we talk about the entire shoulder girdle then this is the most common congenital anomaly it is the most common congenital malformation age of presentation i will not say that you know there is particular age of presentation since most of the deformities are noticed at the time of birth the child is born and you know uh, it is usually noticed by that time gender distribution there is no literature to mention that who is more involved so it is kind of an equal distribution but yes unilaterality is way more common as compared to bilaterality i would say that bilaterality is very rare it is almost 10% now if it is unilateral which is more common then of course you should know that left sided involvement is more seen left is more than right that is what you know the literature says the observation says and the textbook says <clears throat> you can see in this image i have spoken about this as well that bilaterality is very rare that's hardly close to 10% so unilateral is more common and in that also left side is more common so you can see a very rare bilateral anomaly here and here you can see a unilateral anomaly which is more often which is more common which is more often seen so now moving ahead there is a small slide i put up here regarding the genetics part although i mean it is hardly required for your clinical knowledge the condition is sporadic but yes rarely or so mild dominant pattern of inheritance has been noted now let's come to the actual business let's come to the embryology where the you know the topic ideally should start now scapula is usually seen in front of the level of c4 c5 c6 at 5 weeks of gestation are you getting my point so at 5 weeks of gestation ideally scapula should lie at the level of you can say c4 to c6 aap aise bol sakte ho now what happens is it it is what i'm talking about at the 5th week of gestation or by the end of the 12th week that is precisely you can say 3 months so by 3 months of gestation scapula should ideally come below t3 are you getting my point 
तो आप इसको ऐसे समझ लीजिए दैट फिफ्थ वीक एंड ट्वेल्थ वीक सो फिफ्थ वीक इट इज सी फोर सी फाइव सी सिक्स फिफ्थ वीक इट शुड बी इन फ्रंट ऑफ सी फोर सी फाइव सी सिक्स बट ट्वेल्थ वीक इट शुड कम बिलो इट शुड डिसेंड बिलो टी थ्री नो वेन दिस पैटर्न इज नॉट फॉलोड आप समझ मेरी बात को वेन दिस पैटर्न इज नॉट फॉलोड दैट फिफ्थ वीक ट्वेल्थ वीक फिफ्थ वीक सी फोर टू सी सिक्स ट्वेल्थ वीक बिफोर टी थ्री इफ दिस पैटर्न इज नॉट फॉलोड इफ दिस कॉटल माइग्रेशन इज नॉट फॉलोड इफ दैट इज इंटरप्टेड सो यू लैंड अप इन टू अ एलिवेटेड स्कैपला हैपो प्लास्टिक स्कैपला मिडली रोटेटेड स्कैपला एंड स्प्रिंगल स्कैपला और स्प्रिंगल डिफॉर्मिटी दीज लैंडमार्क्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट The C5 मेरी बात समझो बच्चे the C5 landmark and T2 landmark is very important I'll tell you in one of the slides ahead <coughs> so somewhere down the line we have understood the embryology ठीक है that fifth week C4 to C6 twelfth week it should be below T3 this is the ideal descent pattern if it is not followed then you land up into Sprengel's deformity so the classical time of gestation in which majority of the Sprengels happen is ninth to twelfth week. Are you able to understand my point? So ninth to twelfth week is the classical point where this happens. Now many people they know okay, but there's an interruption in the you know the descent, the caudal migration of scapula, but it's not only to deal with scapula. It is not only to deal with bone. There are issues with the musculature also. There are issues with the cartilage also. There are issues with the descent joints also. Like there are certain muscles I would like to name here: trapezius, uh, rhomboid. the levator scapulae they may be absent they may be hyperplastic serratus anterior sometimes that becomes weak leading to winging of scapula you know leading to exaggerated deformity then there are certain other muscles pec major is there sternocleidomastoid is there latissimus dorsi is there so they are also affected so technically i would say that almost all the muscles in and around that part can be affected okay so it's not only a problem of scapula it's the problem around in the musculature around scapula and that is why when we will come to the treatment part the surgery part uh, of course we will not go into that depths of the surgical procedure uh, because you know the, the the clinical component is more important the pathophysiology is more important but still you know the majority of the surgeries will be dealing with the musculature around what happens to scapula first of all the shape is distorted do not think that scapula will be just a high righted bone without any change in the musculature no aisa nahi hoga scapula will be high righted but apart from that the shape will be dysplastic i'll tell you uh, how it will be dysplastic first of all it will be higher than the usual level the second thing i want you to understand is that it it will be smaller in the vertical plane and it will be larger horizontally आप समझ रहे हैं स्कैपुला विल बी कंप्रेस्ड वर्टिकली एंड इट विल बी एक्सपेंडेड हॉरिजॉन्टली फैल जाती है थोड़ी सी लंबाई कम हो जाएगी और चौड़ी ज्यादा हो जाएगी नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट इट बिकम्स मोर लाइक अ ट्रायंगल इक्विलैटरल ट्रायंगल व्हिच नॉर्मली इट इज नॉट ओके सो वो ऐसे होने की वजह से ऐसे होने की वजह से सो इट मोर मोर ऑर लेस लुक्स लाइक एन इक्विलैटरल ट्रायंगल सो स्कैपुला इज हाइपरप्लास्टिक इट इज एक्सपेंडेड मोर हॉरिजॉन्टली देन वर्टिकली देन द सेकंड थिंग दैट आई वांट यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द मीडियल रोटेशन कंपोनेंट ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है द इनफीरियर एंगल ऑफ द स्कैपुला इट इज रोटेटेड मीडियली सो दैट इज व्हाई व्हेन इट इज रोटेटेड मीडियली नाउ जस्ट इमेजिन देयर इज अ स्कैपुला इफ इट इज रोटेटेड मीडियली देन ग्लेनोइड हैज टू फेस इनफीरियर अब ये बात समझ गए now i'm sure you guys are aware of a uh, supraspinous part of scapula i'm sure you are aware of it scapula mein there is a supraspinous part so there is a spinous process na so there is a supraspinous intraspinous part supraspinous intraspinous anatomy first team so the supraspinous part the convexity of the supraspinous part is increased now that leads to a problem uh, that you know that is something that has to articulate with the uh, curvature of the clavicular shaft so when convexity of the supraspinous part is increased so the clavicular scapular distance or in other words the scapulo clavicular distance so that gets narrowed down jiski wajah se there are chances of brachial plexus compression and you know that is a very important reason why in certain surgeries of uh, uh sprengel's deformity we have to do morselization of the clavicle because i'm telling you again so there's a supraspinous part normally it is convex so the convexity is increased so the distance between scapula and clavicle is decreased because of which it leads to brachial plexus compression so that is one pathophysiology so bottom line remains the same it is dysplastic it is uh, expanded more horizontally and decreased dimensions vertically it is higher than the normal 
the inferior angle is rotated medially so that the glenoid faces uh, inferiorly and then you know the convexity is increased particularly of the supraspinous part of the scapula leading to decreased uh, scapuloclavicular distance and brachial plexus compression now there are certain associated anomalies <coughs> what are those uh, associated anomalies i'm sure you can see there are certain associated anomalies of spine there are certain associated anomalies of ribs let's talk about rib cervical rib in majority of the cases of sprinkle deformity you will see an associated cervical rib you will see fused ribs now as far as spine is concerned in majority of the cases you might observe uh, spina bifida but one hell of a deformity we will talk about that also you know slight discussion will be there in one of the slides clipple field syndrome uh, then hemi vertebra can happen then scoliosis is one of the common associations these are the associated issues whether spine or ribs ribs you will have a cervical rib or a fused rib spine you can have a needle tip defect you can have hemi vertebra you can have scoliosis you can have uh, clipple field anomaly now there is one thing i don't know whether in this image you can appreciate or not but they have written here they have labeled here omo vertebral bone ye bahut important cheez hai isko isko iska zikr hona chahiye it needs to be discussed omo vertebral bone let's talk about omo vertebral bone by the way these associations are shown in these two images also now omo vertebral bone has to be discussed approximately seen in one third cases of sprengel's deformity is an associated anomaly called as omo vertebral bone so you understand my point so there are 10 cases of clipal field three or four will have there are 10 cases of sprengel's deformity three or four will have omo vertebral bone so what is omo vertebral bone it is a rhomboid sometimes trapezoid structure of a accessory cartilage or bone but that's okay the important part is that it expands from it starts from the supromedial border of the scapula to make it simple it starts from the superior border of scapula i'll show you the images also so it starts from superior border of the scapula and it goes towards the spinous process the transverse process or the lamina of c4 to c7 maybe i think i should show you first i should show you first usse aapko clarity aayegi so this is what is your omo vertebral bone so it is a trapezoid or a rhomboid shaped accessory structure might be cartilaginous or might be bony usually bony which extends from the supromedial forget about it it extends from the superior border of scapula and c4 to c7 ठीक है, the C4 to C7 के transverse process, spinous process और lamina, wherever it can go, it goes and gets attached over there. I hope that makes some sense to you. And do you see the omo vertebral bone now? So this is a very very important thing here. That is what is called as the omo vertebral bone. Now this omo vertebral bone. is another important association of sprengel deformity and that is the reason why it does not allow the normal caudal migration of the scapula identified usually on a x-ray of the cervical spine usually not seen that great in ap but better seen in a lateral or oblique x-ray so omo vertebral bone as such is a very important thing it is it can be asked you know in one of the viva questions also so you can very well say that it is one of the classical association of clipal field deformity and sprengel's deformity best seen on an x ray of the cervical spine and lateral and oblique view accessory bone or cartilage which is rhomboid or trapezoid shape extending from the superior margin of the scapula and getting connected to the transverse process of or the lamina or whatever the spinous process of c4 to c7 now <clears throat> i told you that i will be talking just a bit about clipple field deformity because clipple field deformity is a classical association of sprengel's deformity what is clipple field see clipple field syndrome or clipple field deformity better you call it syndrome it is composed of a triad it's very famous for its triad the first part of the triad is a short webbed neck you will have a child who will have a short webbed neck then there will be low posterior hairline now if i had to look towards my left i can look at like this towards my right i can look at like this this child can't he has to rotate his entire body towards left and right so three components short webbed neck low posterior hairline and what is the third component the third component is decreased mobility at neck so this is a classical triad now what is clipple field it's a congenital bony fusion of at least two or more cervical vertebrae that is the basic definition 
so there has to be a congenital bony fusion of two or more at least two or more cervical vertebrae that they are, they are supposed to be unite there has to be a bony fusion now it is a classical association of spinal deformity and vice versa now uh, in cervical spine i'm sure you are aware that we have from c1 to c7 so which is the most common fused segment that you see that is c6 to c7 c6 to c7 is the most common fused segment that is in the lower most part so clipple field is a common association and whenever you see a spinal deformity you should exclude clipple field whenever you see clipple field you will find a spinal associated to that now how does this present clinically see there are two things that i want to talk about one is cosmetic one is functional why i'll tell you the reason you might have seen maybe in your family extended family friends neighborhood ki kabhi message aaya whatsapp aaya that you know a child is born like this and this is the shape of the back or this is something in the back and family is finding something where can you help so you say oh this is sprengel's deformity the scapula is high riding but then what are the issues see as far as let's talk about the functional issues first i think you remember in the first slide of the presentation i told you that you know you can abduct till almost 90 to 100 or maybe 110 degree but uske baad nahi ho payega so there is a restricted movement at the shoulder i agree but beyond 90 95 100 105 degrees ek baat dusri baat the scapulo thoracic movement of course that is restricted homo vertebral bone distorted scapula many reasons majority of the issues are cosmetic majority of the issues are cosmetic so you have a high riding scapula you have a scoliotic curve aayega aayega then you will have a torticollis also you will have a condition that is called as caput osteosum so what is caput osteosum osteosum is an asymmetric development of the skull so plagiocephaly we usko bolte hain then you will have a facial asymmetry also because muscles of that side will be involved whether it is sternocleidomastoid or trapezius or pec major or deltoid so precisely a clinical feature and then very important clinical staging cavendish grading this is a important thing which is usually asked in viva exams if at all you know you see a case of uh, sprengel's deformity by the way let me uh, utilize this one moment to tell you that uh, sprengel deformity is a not very common but still it is a common short case normally pediatric congenital anomalies they don't give usually in pg exam but if at all they give then one common thing that they encounter is uh, you can encounter as a student as an exam going candidate is sprengel deformity and cavendish grading is something which will be asked it's a clinical grading it shows severity of sprengel deformity there are four grades grade 1 2 3 4 simple very mild mild moderate severe very mild mild moderate severe first of all very mild now before i explain the grading let me tell you cavendish grading is based upon two things number one what is the level of shoulders aap samajh na is baat ko so there will be two things mainly one is the level of shoulder second thing you know whether the deformity is visible or not with clothes on off ye baatein hain isme so i told you grade 1 2 3 4 very mild mild moderate severe first of all very mild now when we talk about the very mild staging it is simple that shoulders are at level and uh, if the you know patient is dressed hardly you can see anything there is no deformity so that is cavendish grade 1 very mild that you know level pe hai dono cheeze you hardly see any deformity then you have level 2 when you have level 2 shoulders are again almost at level which is category 2 grade 2 which is mild shoulders are again at level but now you know what when the patient is dressed deformity is slightly visible as in the form of a slight webbing of the neck वैसे well, लगता है यहां पे थोड़ा सा there's a slight web which is uh, which is occurred then you come down to cavendish category 3 which is uh, moderate in moderate first of all shoulders are not at level one shoulder is slightly elevated deformity is visible with clothes without clothes whatever grade 4 boss shoulder is highly elevated and the most important part is that the superior angle of the scapula is almost touching the occiput so there are four stages stage 1 you can understand it like this in cavendish grading clinical grading very mild mild moderate severe stage 1 stage 2 shoulders are at level stage 3 stage 4 they are not at level stage 3 it is elevated slightly stage 4 it is elevated in, to an extent that it is touching the scapula is touching the occiput stage 1 
the person is dressed you cannot see anything stage one with dress with the person is dressed the, the child is dressed you can see slight webbing stage three stage four deformity is clear cut visible uh, with the shirt on off whatever so this is cavendish grading uh, clinical grading when you see the patient you talk about a diagnosis personally i would say that uh, you know it is a clinical diagnosis undoubtedly there is no confusion but then of course you get an x-ray done uh, i mean i'm not saying that it is diagnosed only clinically but yes there's a high clinical index of suspicion and then you get an x-ray done x-ray of the cervical spine and uh, you get an x-ray of the chest also you get an x-ray of the thoracic spine also because you have to see the concomitant issues also so you see a high riding scapula but let me give you a little more about it you see homo vertebral bone which we have already spoken about i think you remember now this is something which i want you to remember that there are three things which are, we are going to understand one is an elevated scapula second thing is the medial rotation of the inferior angle and third is the ovb the homo vertebral bone so <clears throat> the elevated scapula i am repeating the points as i have said earlier that scapula will not only be elevated okay it will be dysplastic not only be dysplastic it will be expanded more horizontally rather than vertically into an extent that it will resemble you know just like an equilateral triangle then rotation of the inferior angle i hope you remember i told you that inferior angle will be you know migrated medially to an extent that glenoid starts facing inferiorly homo vertebral bone we have discussed in length about homo vertebral bone a rhomboid trapezoid shaped structure which is an accessory bone or cartilage connecting the superior angle of scapula to the spinous process lamini of c4 to c7 one of the classical you know, associations clinically we had a cavendish grading radiologically we have a regolds classification again i discussed see this is what i want all of you to imbibe that you know we i, I mean i have always focused upon this concept of connecting the dots so that's why in anatomy i told you that there are two very important landmarks if you remember c5 and t2 maine bola tha aapko that at around 5 weeks of gestation it is in front of c4 to c6 that at 12 weeks of gestation it should be below t3 maine bola tha aapko and these c5 and t2 are very important landmarks why because now you will come to know why they are important so cavendish grading was a clinical grading now we'll talk about regolds grading or regolds classification which is a x ray based classification very simple there are two landmarks c5 c5 and t2 so according to regolds classification spangle deformities are three types type 1 type 2 type 3 right it'll, my apologies it will depend upon what that what is the position of scapula hai na what is the position of scapula so if your scapula just listen to me if your scapula if your scapula is below t2 i will say it is just grade 1 if your scapula is lower than t2 and above t4 i'll say it is grade 1 but if your scapula is between c5 and t2 then i will say that it is grade 2 that's moderate kind of a thing but if your supramedial angle of the scapula is extending above c5 i will say boss this is severe meri baat samajh mein aayi ki nahi so if it is between t2 t4 i'll say okay grade 1 mild if it is between c5 t2 i'll say okay it is moderate if it is above c5 then i will say it is severe it is serious and one has to you know take care of it so that is shown in the image also we had already spoken about these two important anatomical landmarks ct um uh, i'll be very honest here that ct is mainly used for pre operative planning the classical ct scan with nccd with 3d reconstruction is basically uh, used if you are performing a surgery because you have to visualize the pathoanatomy and i would say most importantly you have to visualize the homo vertebral bar i'm sure uh, you can very well see this homo vertebral bar here abhi to koi confusion nahi hona chahiye aapko homo vertebral bar mein so there is a classical homo vertebral bar that you can see here and the anterior convexity of the supraspinous process is increased because of which the scapulo clavicular distance is decreased and we have already spoken about that there are certain changes in the medial and lateral border you know the concave thing becomes flat the convex things becomes becomes increased and all these things can happen again you can see an homo vertebral bar if you talk about Uh, Sprengel deformity, and if the examiner is not asking homo vertebral bar, that means something is wrong. If pakka hai, yana yana. 
So if there's a short case of a sprinkle deformity, the first question is examiner will be like, okay, diagnosis, sprinkle deformity, leave it. What is omovertebral bar? So omovertebral bar is important. There are two differential diagnoses. One is the palsy, the long thoracic nerve. I hope you remember the LTN, the long thoracic nerve or the nerve of bell or the nerve to serratus anterior, C5, C6, C7. I'm sure you guys know that you know that is also one of the reasons for winging of scapula when you press against a wall the medial border of the scapula becomes prominent so that is again one differential diagnosis and the second differential diagnosis is spinal accessory palsy the trapezius palsy so that also leads to winging so there are two types of winging i'm sure you understand this one is due to serratus palsy another is due to trapezius palsy so these are the two differential diagnoses now let's talk about prognosis before surgery, let's talk about prognosis. I will not say that uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's more of an unfavorable uh, prognosis, even despite the best of the surgeries. I'm not discouraging anyone for surgery, but whatever limited experience that I have had, and I've had the fortune of assisting, you know, more than six, seven cases, uh, I have never seen a very drastic change in the, uh, cosmetic as well as the functional uh, you know capabilities of a patient so what i would say that this mobility might increase maybe it can come down to this maybe it can come up to this but still you know some sort of asymmetry will be there what are the factors to be assessed before performing surgery the first thing that's most important is the severity that how severe is the problem um Cavendish is one guide to that. Regalt is one guide to that. So, you see severity. Look, the other functional impairment. Look, because we are not treating the scapula. We are treating the person who has that high riding scapula. So, one is the severity, maybe Cavendish or Regalt. Second thing, second thing is the functional impairment that whether he is able to follow his daily ordinary pursuits or not. The answer to this is the patient is still able to manage, you know, at his uh, normal you know functional activities but still we are enthusiastic to operate as any one third thing is age we'll talk about that fourth is associated comorbid condition associated congenital anomalies three to eight years is a golden period to operate three to eight years is a golden period to operate i would say second thing is that the person should ask for it the patient should ask for it the the family should ask for it that nahi, he's not able to do this 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 which is a daily routine activity then we might think of surgery so these are two important points three to eight years and uh, you know significant uh, deformity should be there clinical uh, cosmetically um, before two years surgical intervention is not at all required and if you perform surgery you know after the window of five years then i think you are going to get good results we will talk about surgical treatments. I'll give you the names. I'll give you just a brief hint of the surgical procedures because a couple of them, a couple of them have been asked. Like Woodward is something I remember that in one of the DNB theory exam, it was asked. I think in three marks or something like that. So before we talk about that, these are certain important muscles. As we know that sprinkle deformity is not only a bony issue, but there are issues with the associated muscles in and around that part. So you should know the normal origin, insertion, nerve supply and action. Again, you should know, you know, osteology should be good if you are, you know, for an orthopedic surgeon, the basic thing is always anatomy. Nothing more than anatomy. Orthopedics, I always say you know, in my lectures, it is nothing but a glorified clinical anatomy where you get the license to, you know, cut and heal. That's all. So anyhow, after this osteology component, after this basic anatomy component, soft tissue muscle component, let's talk about surgical treatment. What a surgeon should plan? Three things. If a surgeon starts thinking of surgery, you know, the patient family says in a career because there is a lot of issues. Then you get an X-ray, you get a CT, you see all these things. Then a surgeon starts thinking of three things. First, priority is always lowering down the scapula. The first priority is always, you know, the, the caudal migration which has been interrupted. I have to make it possible. I have to bring the scapula down. For that, I might have to detach and reattach various insertions, various origins of the muscles in and around. You know, if I have to bring the scapula down, the mu certain muscles, origin there are certain muscles which are insertion which are insertion, so I have to do that. First thing is that, dealing with the muscles around the scapula to bring it, to lower it down. The second thing is, definitely, 
definitely the uh, resection of the supromedial border and the omovertebral bar. Wo karna padega. Because if you don't clip that, that supromedial border and omovertebral bar, then you are not going to achieve the free movement and the free abduction. I told you initially, if you remember, that in certain cases we need to perform the clavicular morselization also. So that is again an accessory step. Now certain names, Poteese procedure, uh, shock modified Poteese procedure. One of the questions which I have seen in one of the theory exams of DMB orthopedics, Woodward procedure, modified Woodward procedure, green scapuloplasty, modified green scapuloplasty, Mears procedure. Ideally, I would not ask you, I would not uh, you know, force you to remember the steps and going to, going to the details, but you should know the you should know the bottom line. The bottom line will remain the same that I have to detach and reattach the muscles around to bring the scapula down. I have to reset the omovertebral bar and the supramedial border. So exactly this is Putti's procedure. Detachment of the scapular insertion of the rhomboidus and trapezius, resection of the homovertebral bar, lowering the scapula and fixing the inferior angle to the rib at the level. So that is Putti's procedure. Then shock modified, modified Putti's procedure. It said that not only you will do the subperiosteal dissection of the musculature, but they said, no, 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 we will add another osteotomy. So how shock modified, they added another supraspinous scapular area osteotomy and the base of acromion. So they said that, no, not only, you know, you detach and reattach the muscles, Apart from the subperiosteal dissection of the muscle, they said ki jo, uh, acromion ka base and the supraspinous part of the scapula, we will do an osteotomy over there to bring the scapula down. So, uh, putis was basically a muscular thing. They added some osteotomy, shock added an osteotomy, you can remember it like this. Now, similarly, when we talk about green scapuloplasty, again the same, you have a in skin and in a pathoanatomy of this uh, sprinkle deformity, you have the dysplastic, the prominent superior scapula border. So when you resect that, when you resect that and you do the extra periosteal division of the muscles to allow the scapula to come down, that is called green scapuloplasty. So this is again what is shown here, again shown here. But again, you know, you are not supposed to, you know, mug them up. Now, again, the Putti's procedure was modified by shock. The green scapuloplasty was again modified. Now, what they say is, they say that, first of all, disinsertion of supraspinatus. Okay, fine. Then they say that you do a clavicular osteotomy. In, in green scapuloplasty, we were doing an osteotomy in the suprascapular uh, border along with the chromial base. They say that, no, you have to do a clavicular osteotomy. And then you have to do a limited release of the serratus anterior to allow the descent of the scapula. Now, why modified green scapuloplasty added one hell of a thing that is called as clavicular osteotomy because till modified green scapuloplasty, the thing which was seen was that even despite surgery or rather there was a significant post-operative complication of brachial plexus compression. Why? Because I hope you remember that there is a too much of convexity of the supraspinous part of the scapula, clavicular shaft is there, so the scapuloclavicular distance was decreased. So even post-operatively, there was brachial plexus compression. So they said that, you know, uh, by doing this clavicular osteotomy, the incidence of brachial plexus injury could be reduced. So this was a modified green scapuloplasty where one thing was... So you're, you're supposed to remember the, ca the catch words. So modified green scapuloplasty made the word clavicular resection, clavicular osteotomy is very important. Now, Woodward procedure. Basically, Woodward me tha kya, aapko batata The only thing was, they were wanting to put scapula into a pocket of trapezius. That's all what they wanted. So they said that the origin of trapezius, they wanted to shift, you know, to a more inferior position on the spinous process. That's the only thing that they wanted. They they said ki ye trapezius hai, hai? It is, uh, you know, it is dysplastic. It is hypoplastic. It is attached high up. They said usko se the, the, the origin of the trapezius should be detached from a spinous process and it should be shifted somewhere inferiorly. And then they wanted, you know, place a scapula in the pocket of the trapezius. Now, then, you know, they went for a modified woodward. In modified woodward, again, same thing was uh, 
there but there they wanted to correct the glenoid tilt also i told you now glenoid started facing inferiorly so they said no we will try to absorb we will try to put some absorbable sutures so that the glenoid varus can be corrected and glenoid can face properly to the shoulder so you know you remember the keywords मैं रिपीट कर देता हूँ डोंट वेरी आई विल रिमेंबर द की वर्ड सो इन ओटीज प्रोसीजर इट इज वेरी सिंपल वी आर डूइंग सर्टन मस्कुलर थिंग्स वी आर अटैचिंग डिटैचिंग री अटैचिंग एंड पुटिंग स्कैपुलर डाउन वेन यू एड अस्टोटमी क्लोज टू द सुपरा स्पाइनर स्कैपुलर एरिया एंड द क्रोमियल बेस वी कॉल इट शॉक्स मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ पुटी ग्रीन स्कैपुलर प्लास्टी वी डू बेसिकली द सेम थिंग द रिसेक्शन विल बी डन एंड एवरीथिंग विल बी डन बट इन मॉडिफाइड ग्रीन स्कैपुलर प्लास्टी वी एड clavicular resection or clavicular osteotomy to decrease the brachial plexus complication woodward we are shifting the origin of trapezius down so that scapula can be kept in a pocket of trapezius as it is samajh lo aap then modified woodward mein what we did we did an osteotomy so that glenoid varus can be corrected aap aise samajh lijiye isko are we able to understand this so this is modified woodward um, you know basic thing that has been explained and woodward was something that i saw as one of the short notes so you should be aware of it so prone position preparation of the part dental occiput then a midline vertical incision then detachment of the attachment of you can see here is detachment of the attachment of trapezius and rhomboidus from the spinous process so from the spinous process you detach the attachment of rhomboidus and trapezius then sab me karna padega you have to release the omo vertebral bar you have to release the omo vertebral band then you have to excise the supra medial angle of the scapula why i'm giving you the steps of this particular thing is because of that dnb question that i saw then you relocate the scapula to a new position you bring it slightly down and then you suture the trapezius to the inferior spinous process you are going to do do that and then you have to close in layer so i hope modified woodward makes some sense to you so that when you solve that dnb question you have a good amount of theory to write down so prone posture part preparation midline vertical incision detachment of rhomboidus and trapezius then you have to clear the omo vertebral band you have to excise the supramedial angle of scapula then you have to relocate the scapula then you have to suture the trapezius to the inferior spinous process and please close the wound in layers then there's a mears procedure which is reported in the last in which five steps were given first was as usual and always with every procedure that there should be a superiorostal dissection of the scapular musculature then extra periosteal excision of the omo vertebral bone then supraspinatus fossa osteotomy till now the steps you have heard them earlier that you have to elevate the scapular musculature you have to dissect or resect the omo vertebral band you have to do a supraspinatus fossa osteotomy then you have to release the longitude of triceps in a part of the teres minor and then you have to resect the supralateral border of the scapula to gain main abduction so these are the five important steps in mears procedure so same thing they have mentioned here so these are the areas to be osteotomized we have uh, made a complete table here of all the surgeries but still my request whether you are a ms candidate or a dnb or a diploma orthopedics that you should know as far as all the surgical procedures are concerned you should remember the names whether it is putties or shock modified or green scapuloplasty or modified green scapuloplasty or woodward or modified woodward or mears but you should know the steps of modified woodward Uh, procedure and if at all you get a short note on sprinkles deformity you should mention uh, modified woodward in a bit detail i think that will complete the topic now post operative complications three complications one is which i have seen in one of the cases is brachial plexus palsy and as i said that if you really wish to avoid please go for clavicular morselization because it is considered to be one of the most important steps now then winging of scapula sometimes we try to reattach serratus and we are not able to do that so incomplete reattachment leads to winging and keloid formation it's a normal complication that can happen with any surgery so nothing unique in it so these are the complication and i think with this i come to the conclusion of the surgical treatment now what happens post surgery physiotherapy now physiotherapy is very important here because you are playing with a lot of muscles you are detaching some reattaching some you are shifting their origins their insertions you are making their pockets 
gradual mobilization relaxed mobilization passive mobilization and uh, yeah you can use certain physiotherapy modalities i'm not a very big fan of them i would say that gradual passive relaxed mobilization is the key and uh, gradual abduction of the shoulder and elevation of the shoulder you know one should work on it and then posture correction is very important so these are three four things that we normally tell to the patients and their families at the time of discharge so i think with this we come towards the end of this important uh, clinical entity called as sprinkles deformity or sprinkles shoulder i hope you have benefited from this so thank you so much for this patient listening and watching and uh, now that you know we finished this video i would like to inform one more thing here so there's a portal called as comprehensive orthopedics which is run on this website of mine dr tusharmehta.com so now we are coming up in an app format as well and uh, you know since you know that i've been you know born and brought up in an institute called as delhi academy of medical sciences dams so now the e medicos app of dams which is uh, you know one of the most uh, highly anticipated uh, you know apps in the pg preparation today so we are starting a master class for pg residents in uh, that e medicos app also so now you can uh, watch all these important lectures and master class and videos on e medicos also so you can whether you have an android phone or a uh, google uh, or, or a iphone you can go to the itunes you can go to the the app store basically or the playstation play store so you can go there you can download the app and uh, you can search for the master class orthopedics and maybe you can you know subscribe there and you can see uh, all the videos of orthopedics for pgs there so you now you have options of two formats so one is the website that has been highly appreciated and we've got many subscribers in the last about 6 months and now we are coming on we are coming on an app format also so that if you are having a you know phone in your pocket and you don't want to open a proper laptop so you can watch it in the app format as well details are already there attached in this uh, post related to this video so if at all there is any other issue you can reach out to me as a, you know on an email or message on instagram or any of the social media handles that i have they are usually by the name of dr tushar mehta i'll be more than happy to help so thank you so much have a great year ahead looking forward to see you again god bless take care of your family and your loved ones bye bye